Good afternoon, and welcome to the second uh, of the uh, five Lunch and Learns. Uh, I am Dr. Joseph Fox. I am the uh, program event coordinator for the uh, Juneteenth celebration, and uh, we're just uh, delighted that you're here. Uh, we are delighted to be able to do these five Lunch and Learns and the five uh, films as well as the uh, not charging vendors at the two-day festival because of the sponsorship that we have had. So I want to recognize the city of Asheville, Buncombe County, uh, Asheville Buncombe Technical Community College, the Asheville Schools Foundation and Asheville City Schools Foundation, Arts Asheville, Vero Beer, Explore Asheville, Juneteenth of Asheville, Mission Health, Mountain Biz Works, and we can't uh, leave out our, our uh, community partner, Aisha Adams Media Group. So I'm going to kick it over to Dr. Orlene Simmons, who is the founder and president of the MK, MLK Association of Asheville and Buncombe County. She will share some of her reflections about life here at Stephen Lee Center, and then she will call on each of our uh, presenters to come and give you uh, a short reflection around uh, their experiences here. Dr. Simmons, give her a hand, please. Well, good day, everyone. And thank you so very much uh, uh, for, being, for being here. Uh, we're very excited to bring you some uh, some some history and talk a, talk about the Stevens Lee High School that so many of us called the Castle on the Hill because it sat way up on top of this hill and it didn't matter which side you you came in from you had to go up and look at the Castle on the Hill. It was a place where everyone knew everyone. The teachers knew your parents. And sometimes it felt to us that they were our second set of parents. Students came from far and near, even from the outside counties of Buncombe County because of segregation. And some of them traveled long and far by, by buses in order to get here. So many of us made a sacrifice, but we loved this school and we had great memories. And the wall over here, you can still see the writings for many people who were, who were students. And this has been preserved uh, I remember being a student here, and whenever I come into this very room, I remember dancing on this floor. My dance teacher was named Miss Chappelle, and we did the, not only did we do the dance classes, but we performed at um, special events uh, around Christmas time and other times, as well as having our uh, special event where parents and other people were um, invited to see us. I have a number of good friends here today who are also um, alumni, and they're going to share some things with you, uh, the history and about the extracurricular activities. Uh, there was the famous Stevens Lee Band that everyone wanted to see in the Christmas parade. And of course, they were the last band to perform because people on the lines wanted to join in and march with the majorettes. For that reason, they were at the end. But guess what was behind them at the end? The horses. 
And you know what horses do. But the majoress marched right, the majoress marched right on, and the band, and the band followed, and all of us got to be part of that parade and marched to the end. So our friends here are going to tell you um, about some of these um, some of these activities, and I will let them introduce themselves because they're going to described being a student here and the part that they played in. First, the history. Good afternoon. My name is Sarah, I always say Weston Hart, and I was a class of 1957 but these ladies, especially Ms. Brown, she's going to really, really give you the history. But as or Dr. Orlean said, this is the castle on the hill. Reason why it's so, I love it so much because I had to travel 17 miles one way and 17 miles another way because I lived in Mars Hill. I had to get up very early in the morning I had to wait until the bus come from Hot Springs. Marshall and Mars Hill was his last um, trip. And as we would come up the hill, uh, the students, some of the students would be on the rail out there and they would say, here comes the country bumpkins. <laughs> That's what we were called. But you know, I'm just proud that I did get, and our teachers, our teachers, were very, very good. They loved us. They taught us. They taught us a lot of values. And, you know, right now I am president of the Stevens Lee Alumni Association. And we have, we still do a lot of things. If you get a chance, go downstairs. It's the last room on your right. And you can see a lot more history. Uh, you'll see the, uh, pictures on the walls there, and they tell, a, they tell a lot of story, more than I can tell about Stevens Lee. But um, what I, else I would like to say is the reason, I, reason why I came from Mars Hill, because right now I went first through the eighth grade at our Mars Hill Anderson Rosenwald School, which is now open, and I hope when you get a chance, when it opens, that well, it's when we start having groups that you will come out to Mars Hill and see where Orlean and I started in Mars Hill. So I'm going to let Ms. Brown come and Ms. Treva come and tell you more, but that's, that's just a little bit of what Stevens Lever, that I'm proud to be of. 1957. <laughs> of Stevens Lee High School. Thank you all very much. My name is Treva Sami Chavis, and I was in the Stevens Lee Marching Band. And from a distance, you could hear. And before we would make appearances on the street, our young ladies, you can't hear me? Okay, I thought my mouth, see, that's from being in the band and singing with Mrs. Reynolds. Okay, but you can hear me better now, right? But you know, I like to move around. I'm a musician also, so I just go from one place to, to another. Oh, I, oh, see, I'm not used to this technology and all this stuff. And if I have to use this other hand, I'll just put it down, as I almost did. Before we would make our appearances, there, the young ladies had to go out for what we call the majorette. And I think we had to pay, was it a quarter, a dime? I know that time a dime, nickel, quarter went a long ways. They would, we would 
all be in the bleachers, and they had a sign on their back with a number. And the judges were the teachers. And everyone that went out, I don't think the drum majors, who were the guys, had to go and march for the school and to be judged. But the young ladies did. And they would come from this entry here and march all the way around. And everyone that had <laughs> paid the nickel a quarter, I think it was a quarter that we paid. To, well, I didn't have to pay because I was in the band, but the others had to pay. And the young ladies were chosen that day, marching around. And that was a big thing then at Stevens Lee. Oh, I forgot to tell you my class, class of 1954. <laughs> and you can, you can add it up. You can add it. I graduated on time, 17. <laughs> and yes, I'm 86 years old, going on 87 in August. I'm glad to be here. All right, after the majorettes were chosen, we would have rehearsals. At every re After we would eat our lunch, we would have to march and rehearse at the stadium. And that was a big thing, too. Every time those drums would start, da -dum, da -dum, everyone would come from every direction, even in the school, in the neighborhood, in every place, to hear, those, hear us and to see us march. We would go right down it was, uh, Carver Avenue, but I don't think it was Carver then, was it? It was called, hey, it was called Carver. Oh, yes, it was Catholic here, but it was changed to Carver during our time. Okay, because I was thinking it was Hade Street or Hade Street or Hade Street or something. But anyway, I'm getting old. I can't remember. That's why I have this. But anyway, we would practice, and everyone would come on we, what we call the rail. The rail was around the gym, and everyone would be leaning over the rail, am I right, to see us march down the street. Uh, our band included the drum major, who were usually guys. But later on, our drum majors were ladies also. If you, if you remember Vernell Harper Bailey, she was one of our drum majors during my time. Uh, Dorothy Jean Wilkins, she was a drum major. And then our drum major, uh, drum major they started out as drum majorettes, but they ended up as drum majors. That means they led the whole band. And, which were usually guys. Adolphus McGee was one of our drum majors, and he started out as a tumbler. We had tumblers, and how they did this, I don't know. They would, we call it cutting flips, I don't know what you call it now, but they would be turning like little wheels. And we would get, wait until we got in front of Cresses to really show out. We would march down the street, we'd hear that whistle, and that whistle meant everything for us to do. We had little steps that we did, and the drum major would give us signals with his baton, like, and each signal meant something. Oh, look, look at me, it's going back here, instead of here. Each signal <laughs> meant something when we were marching. We marched in the, for our homecoming, and this was during the days of segregation. We could not march down Main Street until the Christmas parade. That was for a while. But then after a few years, we were able to march uh, through town for our homecoming. Before that, our homecoming parades had to be up Eagle Street, built more, then we'd come college, down Valley, and back to the school. But when some of the barriers went down, we could march all over town. Well, I'll say uh, Haywood Street, Patton Avenue, down Eagle, and back to the school. Now, going to this, back to this Christmas parade. Now, we were told that we were put in the rear because after Stevens Lee marched, everybody would go home. Now, one year, they put us in front of Santa, 
And I was told, now I don't know how true this is, that people went home and poor Santa didn't have anybody to see him because everyone came to see Stevens Lee and left. That's right. That's what I was told. I don't know how true that is. We would go to band festivals, and at that time the festivals were held at A&T College at that time, not A&T University. We had cl band clinics and band festivals, and we were judged. And most of the time, we would come back with a B plus. I don't never remember getting an A because you, we had competition when we would go to these uh, different things. Uh, we performed at football games. That's what we uh, really waited for. Uh, Sister Hallam has a picture that she's going to bring around. We aren't going to pass it because it is so old that it may come apart. <laughs> so she's going to show. That's the band in 1951. That was my freshman year. I was in the band from 51 to 54. And then in, she's going to show you a picture in my yearbook that was in 54. I was a senior that year. But many good memories. And as I said, when I went to college, I majored in music because I didn't major in band music or orchestra, but I majored in music education following Mrs. Ollie Reynolds. Okay, that's it for me. Now, Ms. Wright. But that's, why, that's why I put her last. And I promise you, I brought enough material that I will bore you to death. You need to put it back in there. <laughs> See, we old people, we don't use these mics and stuff. How to put it in? Okay, that's it. Okay, can okay. everybody hear me? Okay. I don't like the microphone. Well, here we go again. <laughs> Believe it or not, this was my classmate. I graduated in 1954 also. And we were a bad group of graduates. And we upheld the principles of the school because we were taught when we got here. When we first came in the ninth grade, we thought, oh, well, I'm grown. I'll come over here and I'll do whatever I want to do. We came from Ashland Avenue Junior High School. And there we had Mrs. Rita Lee, who was the principal. And you could fuss, you could fight, you can do anything you want to until she come out and she said, now boys and girls, and you knew that was time to go in and go to class. Well, we did, and we thought we were learning at that time. We were learning, but we thought when we got to Stevens Lee that we were going to be, we're grown people now. We can do more or less what we choose to do. Wrong. We came and we found out with the teachers that was here, they all had masters, they had doctorates, they were very capable of teaching, but it was during a time of segregation and they were in charge of education for us here at Stevens Lee High School. Okay. We were afraid when we first came in, but we quickly learned through Mrs. Myrtle Rumley, oh no, you're going to be here and you're going to be ladies and you are going to be gentlemen. And believe it or not, we were. But at any rate, education was what we were here for and education was what we got. If you made a D, you'd better be very deserving of that D and it better be the best that you could possibly do. Well, I wasn't one of the D students, thank you. I was one of the A students and we had an honor society called the Crown and Scepter Club. It was a state organization and I was so pleased to be a part of that because I was an A student. So here we go, okay. Ms. Chavis told you about the band. Well, at that particular time, I'm going to tell about it. I'm going to tell about Doc. 
He was the band director, Dr. Madison Lennon. And if you go by chance to Peck Library, you will find in the North Carolina room information on him. He was the most gentle, most kind, most knowledgeable man you would ever want to find anywhere. And behind the band, believe it or not, I was a cheerleader. I could jump and I could twirl and I could yell, and now I can barely walk, but old age takes its toll on all of us eventually. So at any rate, we had a wonderful time. We had a wonderful experience. But when you get to high school, it is a totally different situation in the education experience. Now, it wasn't always so easy because, believe it or not, right here in Buncombe County, there was a time when they thought that blacks did not need an education. A sign of the times, but it changes. We have as much, had as much need as anyone else to have an education. And we had a man to come to Asheville who had been a slave, Isaac Dixon. And believe it or not, he was interested in blacks being educated here in the county of Buncombe. And believe it or not, he became a member of the Asheville City School Board. So black people being on your school boards is nothing different. It means that they are knowledgeable, they have abilities, and they are able to serve and to serve well. But when Isaac Dixon came and he served on the school board, he acquired use of a dilapidated building down on Dundee, which is about a mile away from here. And black students could be educated in the lower grades. We had room for 300 students at that particular time. Now this was like in 18, 1800 something, the later 1800s. And when the schools opened and enrollment was taking place, there was 800 students that had to be turned away because there was not room to accommodate them. But he did not give up and he continued to acquire spaces. Now where we had Stevens Lee High School over here, which was the castle on the hill as Ms. Chavis referred to it, and it was a castle, believe it or not, Sister Hallam has a picture of the school as it was, and it was a haven. But we came in thinking we were grown and we had learned everything we needed to learn and we would do what we wanted to do. But Mrs. Rumley saw to it that we didn't. And we were assigned classes and everything was educational as far as it went. You had to choose what you wanted to do, but there were required subjects. Foreign language, and at that particular time, they had French and they had Spanish. Well, you had to choose. Well, I could barely speak English, according to Mrs. Tolliver, who was the English teacher. When we went into her room, she said, now we're going to learn what it's all about. And she told us, stand up. We stood, hold your shoulders back, pull your buttocks in, and conduct yourself like a lady. I thought, well, that's what I am. But you didn't talk back, so I did. And I decided at that particular time, because she was the dramatics teacher, as well as the English teacher, and I loved her to death, and I thought, well, I'm going to be in dramatics. And I was. Well, learning then that we didn't know how to walk, we didn't know how to talk, and we learned. She started us out on, on limericks. And I'm going to start you out on limericks. Three gray geese in the green grass grazing. Gray were the geese, and green was the grazing. Now, I'm going to get, let, let you do it. Three gray geese in the green grass grazing. 
the geese and green was the grace. You're doing real good. You all have grown up. You know how to talk. <laughs> but at any rate, we did get an education. Believe it or not, we were not here to play. They were not here to play. And we were learning educational skills. They didn't have to teach us how we were supposed to behave because we were taught that in the homes. Before we left home, we were taught how we were to behave. And you'd better not do anything that's going to bring shame on the household. That was a known fact. A little bit different th from what you're seeing today. But at any rate, we did get an education, and we did learn. And I hate this thing. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> but it was not always. Stevens Lee High School. It started out being Catholic Hill School, and that was the high school for blacks here in Buncombe County. And a terrible thing happened. Catholic High School burned down. Seven students were killed, and many others were injured. The grounds lay fallow and burned until it was decided that we would have a high school for blacks in Buncombe County. And the erection of Stevens Lee started in 1921, and it was completed with the first classes attending in 1922. It was a wonderful time. It was a wonderful school. And we were there to learn, and we did learn. All of us have made contributions to the city of Asheville, all over the United States, and many of us are still remaining here. How many in here went to Stevens Lee? It was wonderful. Even the country bumpkins went to Stevens Lee, and they learned as well. But it has not been easy all of this time. We had integration to come in. Now, integration has been a blessing and it has been a curse as well. We are seeing crime waves and everything else. We're seeing youngsters that's not going to get an education, but going because they are made to go. But still, here we are, an integrated group, and it's a wonderful thing. We're not hurting each other. We're not killing each other. We're not shooting at each other. We are enjoying and learning about each other. But back to Stevens Lee. Stevens Lee was an award-winning school. When it came to sports, we had C.L. Moore, and they excelled and was first in sports. And I don't know if you will recall these names, but there was Benny Lake, who is deceased, made it to the big leagues in basketball, and there was What's the young man? Henry Logan. Henry Logan in basketball. He went to Stevens Lee. Now, talking about some famous people that went, you might not call them famous, but I call them famous for the jobs that they had done. We had Terry Bellamy, who went to Stevens Lee. We had a number of people who have made wonderful contributions to this city to this state, and we are very proud of all of them. In 1921, when Stevens Lee was built, nobody knew what was going to happen, but it became a famous high school, and it was deserving of the name, the Castle on the Hill. And we have to go back to 1871 and thank Isaac Isaac who? <laughs> Dixon, for bringing it to us, bringing education to us. Now, you might think that I don't have an education, but I can fool you, I have. <laughs> those who went to Stevens Lee and those that did not, would you please stand now? We're going to sing our alma mater. I will leave you now. I don't have the voice that I used to have. I can do a little bit. Uh -huh. 
was written by Mrs. Ollie Reynolds, who was the music teacher at Stevens Lee. There is a second verse, but we just sang the first. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you so very much. Let's give them another hand for bringing us this great history. I want to mention one other thing about Miss um, Reynolds, uh, the music teacher. Not only was she the music teacher here at um, Stevens Lee, but she was the traveling music teacher for the other um, schools that were the elementary and junior high schools. There was one day a week when we would have um, when we would have music, and I never will forget the day that she came in class and told us that we could no longer refer to lift every voice and sing as the Negro National Anthem. That the name had to be changed and there was only one National Anthem and that we were supposed to refer to it as lift every voice and sing. Uh, one other thing, uh, about her, and I'm going to ask Treva if she'll come back around again and um, talk about um, the corral. Can you please tell us about the corral um, that uh, that you put together? It okay? Well, you well you set me straight on that, but the corral that was this in honor of. Uh, Doc Leonard and um, Miss Reynolds, tell me, tell us. I didn't bring that history. Uh, I, after I graduated and got a, my first job, came back and got married, I moved to New York. During the time that I was in New York, my brother suggested, whose name is Kenzel Summit. Some of you may remember him. He was in the class of 65. I was 11 years older than my little brother. He suggested to Mrs. Reynolds in uh, 1969 that they form a corral. And they formed the Cor Reynolds Miller Corral. First it was the Reynolds Corral, and then Ms. Reynolds wanted it named after Quentin Miller's father and her husband. Then the name was changed to Reynolds Miller Corral. When I came back, I thought that I was going to sing in the corral. Well, blessed feet, I end up directing because God called Mrs. Reynolds home. And I said, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? I said, now I'm not accustomed to conducting adults. I didn't know how that was going to work out. <laughs> I said, I'm used to working with children. But with the help of God and the ability that I had, it was beautiful. And we gave our last concert in 2019, just before the COVID hit. And we would work out of St. Matthias. That's where we had all of our rehearsals. That's why we rehearse, yes. So that's the Reynolds, that's the history that I have of the Reynolds Miller Corral. Now I have it written up and typed up and beautifully written at home, but I didn't know that I was going to. Okay. 
<laughs> no, we, uh, I gave it up because I had trouble with my eyes. And then they had been uh, uh, 50 years, I think. Yeah, they had been uh, active for 50 years, and I thought that it was time for everyone to sort of give it up. And then we, we don't have control of this. A lot of the members passed away, and some have moved away. And the way the music has changed now, the choral music is not sung too much. You know that. So most of the music is contemporary. So there comes a time that we must be it do. <laughs> so that was it. But the Ronald Miller Corral does have a history in Asheville. Thank you for thank you for that. I remember the um, the great music. I do remember them uh, performing for um, the Martin Luther King birthday um, activities and. Um, we loved their their music. Um, uh, they were famous for doing uh, Negro spirituals. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I'm going to get around to that here. Uh, right at this right at this time, I'm going to ask um, members of the audience if you would uh, please please join us. Uh, if you were a student at um, Stevens Lee High School, have a connection with Stevens Lee High School. Maybe your maybe your parent or some member of your your family uh, attended the school. So we would like to hear about your memories. Hello, I'm Jacqueline Hallam, and I had several Hallams to come through Stevens Lee High School. Clifford Hallam. I think he was in the class of 57, 61, thank you. And then we had Jimmy Hallam and Francis Carolyn Hallam, class of 62. And she was on the basketball team. She raised me, Francis Carolyn. And she was also on the Honor Society, very smart young lady. Jimmy was an avid golfer uh, in his time. and. What I remember is that a lot of the ladies um, stayed and many of the men had to leave in order to be successful. And so a lot of the um, well-known folks that we hear about that come back to speak, they did not leave, I guess, just because to claim fame, but in order for them to be respected and to have well-paying jobs to take care of their families because it was very hard to be successful in Asheville as a um, man of color, and unfortunately, it still is today. And so many of them went to, went, as they say, went up null and had successful careers. And then as they retired, um, people tended to come back um, to Western North Carolina, um, which was a much better place to be than when they left. Um, forgive me if I get emotional. I'm native to Asheville. I'm 32 years old. My name is Shaniqua Simeon. Uh, Moses Nathaniel Simeon is my grandfather. I'm his oldest granddaughter. And JC Simeon, a lot of people know him from driving the city bus. Uh, both of them were in the last class of Stevens Lee. Both of them were in the last class of Stevens Lee High School. Um, but I was so disappointed. I did a project last year for my church on some of the history of Stevens Lee to make it kind of fun and acknowledge some of the church members who had gone to Stevens Lee. And I was looking through the yearbooks that they so belovingly let me look through, and I didn't find my grandpa's picture. <laughs> but I remember um, him talking about being here and just some of the challenges, but my granddaddy was very, he was full of pride and so he never talked about any uh, struggles, but I knew that he said he went to Stevens Lee um, but my grandfather, he loved community and he loved cooking. So that's what people mostly remember about him. He's no longer living. He was 65 when he passed away at an early age. Um, this past May was 11 years ago. 
Um, but with me being his oldest granddaughter, he really imparted a lot into me, and I know that the way the school systems were back then had a lot to do with how he raised us, um, just the era that he was growing, growing up in with such discipline. Um, but he was president of the Shiloh Community Association on his deathbed right before Miss Sophie Dixon, and um, he started the community garden in Shiloh, and um, I have pictures of him before it looked as beautiful as it does now, tilling that land. Um, and so I, care, I continue his legacy in food and community um, with my Change Your Palette program. Some of you may have seen me on WLOS Carolina Kitchen and um, by working in Shiloh community with the Shiloh Community Association. Hello, everybody. My name is Martha Brown Boyce. And I went to Stevens Lee class, graduated in class of 1959, 64 years ago. And I love this, this gym is mean, this gym means a lot to me. Miss Chappelle was a great teacher and she taught us well in our physical ed and everything and everything. And we had this dance group. And then one morning, every morning, sometime in the morning we get to school, we would have one morning they had a, we did the, she taught us how to do the Lord's Prayer in a dance way, like, you know, how you perform and you throw your legs up and all like that. We did the Lord's Prayer one morning in the, before we school, right after school started. And then we also had, where we have, uh, the, we had the group, you know, you see on TV when the movie stars do what they call the top hats? We had a line of women, young, well not women, young girls were young girls. We had to call the top hats. We had our top hats and we were just going all around that, all around that stadium up there on that stage doing the top hats. And we would do this, do that, do this, do that. And we'd throw our legs up. We just got a lot of exercise when we were going to school here at Stevens Lee. And I enjoyed going here too. And I, did, and I'm, I have this saying about communities, I'm gonna tell you this. I say of all the communities in Asheville, Stumptown was the best community. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you another thing, and I said all the schools, I said Hill Street and Stevens Lee, the best two schools in Asheville. <laughs> but we had a good time growing up here in Asheville. We just had so many memories, but Mr. Pell was a beautiful person, and Mr. Tolliver was a good principal. We just had a good time growing up over here. And I just enjoy all those memories going back in my mind. I never will forget Stephen Lee, the castle on the hill. The castle on the hill. And you know the castle is a big thing. Just think of the word castle. Stephen Lee was a big thing, a castle on the hill. We enjoy, I enjoyed being at Stephen Lee High School. My name is Mary Brown Harper, a product of the Stephen Lee High School. I'm glad to be a proud of Stephen Lee High School. As my sister said before, the best school, the best school. And you know, we love Stephen Lee School so much, we had to walk from Stumptown to Stephen Lee School. <laughs> and one winter, we had the snow, so they didn't announce my school gonna be out. So we just started walking to school and got all the way, all the way to up on the block. And somebody told them, where y'all going? We said, we're going to school. They said, school been canceled. <laughs> But you know, we love Stephen Lee because we, 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 we had to walk and we didn't mind walking. We enjoyed that. And I thank the Lord for Stephen Lee. So many memories over here. And my sister said the dance group and a lot of other things. And my, my, my parents were Thurston and Minnie Brown. And they had 11 children. My God, 11 children? 11 children. And I tell you one thing, the Lord blessed us all to be alive here two years ago. We lost our sister Brenda and the rest of them still live. So God has really blessed our family. And I thank God for Stevens Lee. I never will forget Stevens Lee High School as long as I live. The best school, the best school. You hear what I said? The best school. The best school. Got good education. The teachers taught you well. You didn't have no excuse. You had to come there and sit down and do what the teachers tell you to do. But now the children are so hard at now they want to listen to you now. But I thank God for all my teaching and all my training at Stevens Lee High School. I thank God for Steve Lee, and I thank God for this memory day. All right. I tell you, 1959. All right. 
60, 64 years ago. I tell you, I don't feel like it. I'm 82 years old, but I don't feel like it. I really don't. I really don't. God has really blessed us. And I, and I got a daughter, and my sister has a daughter. I tell you, they tell everybody, my mama, and my, they say my mama can outwalk us. We can. <laughs> we, talk, well, we thank God for this gathering. Good members of Stephen Lee High School, that's great to see everyone here today. And God bless you all. Amen. Remember Stephen Lee High School. Remember Stephen Lee High School. Amen. Don't forget about it, because they're the best school. Hallelujah. Right. <laughs> Greetings. I'm, I'm Pastor Hardaway from Rock Hill Mission Baptist Church uh, and also Project Like Enough. And it's good to be here. It's good to hear about the history. I'll share two things, uh, one that I heard of, one that I heard, but I'm a witness to it, okay? All right? Now, Stevens Lee, I heard, was a magnificent school. Its structure. In fact, it was in the Architectural Digest as one of the magnificent buildings in America. Amen? Y'all say amen. amen. Amen's not signing you up, just say we all agree. <laughs> and, and the other one is that the first African-American chief of chaplains in the United States Army was here several years ago, maybe about 10 years ago, for uh, Black History Week. I'm, I'm sorry, it's a month. <laughs> uh, and he said that their team had to come here to play uh, Stevens Lee football team. And they were very scared, <laughs> tremendously scared, to know that they had come from South Carolina to here, to Asheville, North Carolina, to play Stevens Lee football team. So their reputation preceded them. Uh, they were not only magnificent in and, and education, but also in recreation. Basketball, football, I've heard that, and I heard the chief, yeah, clap. And I heard the chief of chaplains, the first African-American chief of chaplains, Matthew Zimmerman, say they were tremendously afraid to come here to Asheville to play Stevens Lee football team. They've been, Amen. 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 And it's good just the, to know that the fond memories and what Stevens Lee has produced that we still see alive and very active in this community is a testimony to the teachers, the parents, and the students who work together to make Stevens Lee such a success, such a magnificent school. That's all I'm going to say. Amen. And I, I know all these ladies here, and they're, they're, they're dynamic. Aren't they? Oh, we all don't know that, huh? Miss <laughs> Sarah? Miss Arlene? Amen. Amen. A lot of history up here. Yes. I've got to go now. Greetings to, uh, to everyone. I came to Asheville about 40 years ago, and it didn't take me long to meet someone from Stevens Lee. Uh, I went down to the barber shop and Mr. Shivers, I think, uh, said something, are you a graduate of Stevens Lee? And I said, no, I just moved here. But Stevens Lee has had an effect on me. Even though I didn't graduate from here, I've only lived here 40 years. It doesn't take you long that you meet Miss Brown in the community, Miss Chavis playing music, uh, Miss Hart as the alumni president, and Miss Orlean Simmons. So, I've been affected by Stevens Lee. Can't go very far that if you, bit, if you went to Stevens Lee, they will tell you within a few sentences that they're graduates of Stevens Lee. Doesn't take them long. Doesn't take them long to, to get there. So I just want to say thank you to the Stevens Lee Alumni Association and to everybody. You have had an effect on my life from church, from community, from organizations to, to everything that you do. Uh, I thought about one time sneaking in here and putting my initials on that wall, but they said, no, 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 no. Maybe down in the corner somewhere, but no. Thank you. <laughs> she watched me. So 
niches are all over these walls over here of Stevens Lee graduate. Thank you for allowing me this time and let's get it on. <laughs> well, good afternoon. My name is Diane Edwards Williams and I wanted to just come because my, my mom was a 1948 graduate of Stevens Lee. Also, I wanted to make sure that everyone knew that my husband now, uh, now of 35 years, Mark Williams, his dad, John Williams, was also a 1948 <laughs> class of Stevens Lee. So my parents, I'm, we're so thankful that they didn't get together, but they did, uh, went out on a little date. The story was my mom, and his dad dated at Stevens Lee because he was a basketball player. She wasn't a majorette, but she wanted so badly to be a majorette. And her name is Jenny Edwards, Jenny Wright, and his John Williams. You know Jenny Wright? Oh, they're looking. But at any rate, uh, we're glad that they did not get married because if they had gotten married, we wouldn't have gotten married. And we're in the same class as well. So I just wanted to point it out that night class of 1948, I was raised by the members of class of 1948 as well. Okay, so thank you. Okay. Well, you know, we could go on and on, but I think we've come to the end of our, of our time. Uh, but I want to say that before you leave, if you would like to visit the Stevens Lee Alumni Room, where you can see more yearbooks, um, memorabilia, photos, what else? Pictures of the teachers and the principals, they are all on display downstairs in the Alumni Room. And uh, the president, Sarah Hart, will um, happily escort you there uh, so that you can uh, so that you can see, and she'll probably share some more memories with you. Uh, but in closing, I'd like to uh, read the last verse of this particular poem that was written by Lucille Ray, a former student of the of the school and a poet. And it reads, we didn't forget. The gym is still here, but the school is gone. But the memories of that old castle on the hill will live in our hearts as we move on. Let's hold the torch and hold it high because the spirit of Stevens Lee will never die. Let's not forget. And I'm going to turn it back over to Dr. Joseph Fox. Thank our panelists and those of you that uh, shared your reflections. You know, often I'm asked, where do we go from here in terms of uh, our Juneteenth legacy? And education is the key. And so if we're looking at uh, a better life, if we're looking at cre uh, limiting that or decreasing that wealth gap, education is the way that we do that. And the more that we are informed of our true history, or like I like to say when I do DEIB uh, workshops, our complete history, uh, the more that we are familiar with that, then we don't repeat our past history, but we move forward. So again, thank you for coming out today, and have a good day.